pastimes and activities. How old are you? I'm really excited for Aunt Mary's surprise birthday party this afternoon. Aren't you? Yeah. How old is she? She'll be fifty-five on May fourteenth. Wow! I didn't know that my mom was older. She's going to be fifty-seven on September second. Anyway, Aunt Mary's going to be so surprised to see us all here. I know, but we still have to get all the food set up before she gets here. Okay, we're all ready now. Shh, she's here. Surprise! Language notes. I'm really excited. Notice the emphasis on really. Really is used to emphasize the adjective excited here. Birthday party. Notice that the normal stress for a compound noun falls on the first element of the compound. Aren't you? This negative tag is used to show that the speaker expects a positive answer. Patty assumes that Susan is also looking forward to the party. I'm really excited for Aunt Mary's surprise birthday party this afternoon. Aren't you? She'll be fifty-five. Notice that fifty-five is stressed here. This detail answers the question. How old is she? Fourteenth. Notice that we use the th for ordinal numbers starting with four, but first, second, and third. The stress is on the second syllable, fourteenth. Compare this with fortieth. She'll be fifty-five on May fourteenth. She's going to be. Notice how this is pronounced like gonna be. Instead of four syllables going to be, there are three syllables gonna be. She's gonna be fifty-seven on September second. I'm really excited for Aunt Mary's surprise birthday party this afternoon. Aren't you? Yeah. How old is she? She'll be fifty-five on May fourteenth. Wow! I didn't know that my mom was older. She's going to be fifty-seven on September second. Anyway, Aunt Mary's going to be so surprised to see us all here. I know, but we still have to get all the food set up before she gets here. Okay, we're all ready now. Shh! She's here. Surprise! Pastimes and activities. At the movies, we'd like two tickets for the three thirty show, please. Here you go. Enjoy the movie. Would you mind moving over one so my friend and I can sit together? No, not at all. Thanks a lot. Language notes. The three thirty show. Movies are shown at different times throughout the day. This refers to the movie that starts at 3:30. Notice the emphasis on 3:30. We'd like two tickets for the 3:30 show, please. Enjoy the movie. Notice how the intonation rises on movie. This is said in a friendly way and is followed by an exclamation point. Here you go. Enjoy the movie. Would you mind? Is a polite way to ask. Can you do something for me? Notice the verb ends in ing. Compare this structure to would you mind if I plus a verb that ends in ed. Would you mind if I opened the window? Compare. Would you mind sitting here? Would you mind if I sat here? Moving over one here. One is short for one seat. Would you mind moving over one so my friend and I can sit together? 
"No, not at all," is a way of saying "No, I don't mind," or "I will be glad to." Notice the answer to "Would you mind?" is in the negative form. We'd like two tickets for the three thirty show, please. Here you go. Enjoy the movie. Would you mind moving over one so my friend and I can sit together? No, not at all. Thanks a lot. Pastimes and activities. What are you good at? So, what should we do? Well, I like to do arts and crafts, and I'm really good at drawing. What do you think? Hmm. How about playing a board game? That'd be more fun. Okay, let's play Scrabble. I'm really good at spelling too. Oh yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> Language notes. So, notice how the O sound is drawn out here, combined with the intonation, which shows boredom. So, what should we do? I'm really good at. Really means very and is used to emphasize good. It goes before the adjective. And I'm really good at drawing. What do you? Notice the pronunciation here. It sounds like "what do you, what do you, what do you think, what do you think." Hmm. Is used to show that the speaker is thinking. It is also used to show that the speaker disagrees with an idea. How about? Is used to make a tentative suggestion. The speaker is introducing an idea and doesn't want to sound too strong. Hmm. How about playing a board game? Let's is used to make a strong suggestion. The speaker feels confident about the plan. Okay, let's play Scrabble. Oh yeah. Oh yeah is used in a joking way to show a bit of friendly competition. We'll see about that. Meaning, we'll find out soon enough. Notice the emphasis on that, which refers back to good at spelling. Oh yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> So, what should we do? Well, I like to do arts and crafts, and I'm really good at drawing. What do you think? Hmm. How about playing a board game? That'd be more fun. Okay, let's play Scrabble. I'm really good at spelling too. Oh yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> Pastimes and activities. What's your favorite sport? What time is that soccer game on? I thought it started at noon. We must have had the wrong time. Oh well, soccer's not my favorite sport anyway. I much prefer basketball. Oh really? I thought your favorite sport was tennis. I'm a big fan of basketball too. How about a game sometime? Sure thing. Why don't we go shoot some hoops now? Since the soccer game isn't on. Excellent idea. Let's go. Language notes. What time is that soccer game on? Means when does the soccer game start? What time plus something plus on is a common expression used to ask about the start time of a TV show or a movie. What time is that soccer game on? I much prefer basketball. Here means I like basketball a lot more than soccer. Notice how much is stressed to show that the speaker really likes basketball. Oh well, soccer's not my favorite sport anyway. 
I much prefer basketball. Oh, really? Notice the rising intonation on really. This shows that the speaker is surprised. He thought that Jack liked tennis the best. I'm a big fan of basketball. Is a way of saying I like basketball very much. To be a fan of is a casual expression used to describe something you really like. Oh, really? I thought your favorite sport was tennis. I'm a big fan of basketball too. How about a game? Here means let's play a basketball game. How about a game sometime? Sure thing. This is a casual expression used to mean okay. Shoot some hoops means to play an informal game of basketball. This is a casual expression used between friends. Sure thing. Why don't we go shoot some hoops now? Since the soccer game isn't on. What time is that soccer game on? I thought it started at noon. We must have had the wrong time. Oh well, soccer's not my favorite sport anyway. I much prefer basketball. Oh really? I thought your favorite sport was tennis. I'm a big fan of basketball too. How about a game sometime? Sure thing. Why don't we go shoot some hoops now? Since the soccer game isn't on. Excellent idea. Let's go. Pastimes and activities. A night at the theater. What a fantastic performance! Thank you for inviting me to the musical. You are welcome. I'm happy you enjoyed the show. The choreography of the dancers was incredible. It reminds me of when I used to dance. I know you were such a talented ballerina. Do you miss dancing? Oh, that's very kind of you, Shannon. I do miss it sometimes, but I will always be a fan of the arts. That's why I love going to musicals because it's the perfect combination of song, dance, and theater. Absolutely, I'm glad you're still an art fan too. Thank you for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to attend an arts event with you and learn something new. Language notes. You are welcome. Elena replies, "You are welcome" in this dialogue. She could also say, "Don't mention it," which is an example of downgrading. Downgrading a compliment varies with culture. When in doubt, just say, "You are welcome." You are welcome. You are welcome. When getting a compliment to someone, for example, "You were such a talented ballerina." You can either accept the compliment, that's very kind of you, or downplay the compliment. Oh, I wasn't that good. You were such a talented ballerina. Oh, that's very kind of you, Shannon. Giving compliments in English often includes using superlatives: the most, the best. This is the best musical playing on Broadway. What's the most entertaining movie you've seen? However, compliments can also be given by using the construction "I am a fan of." I am a fan of the arts. I am a big fan of theater. I am a huge fan of this band. Notice the use of adjectives. What a fantastic performance! Thank you for inviting me to the musical. You are welcome. I'm happy you enjoyed the show. The choreography of the dancers was incredible. It reminds me of when I used to dance. I know you were such a talented ballerina. Do you miss dancing? Oh, that's very kind of you, Shannon. I do miss it sometimes, but I will always be a fan of the arts. That's why I love going to musicals because it's the perfect combination of song, dance, and theater. Absolutely, I'm glad you're still an art fan too. Thank you for the invitation. 
It's always a pleasure to attend an arts event with you and learn something new. Pastimes and activities. Taking a vacation. I just bought a ticket to New York City. I'm so excited to see the city. Good for you! Traveling is so much fun. I love discovering new places and new people. When are you leaving? Next week. I'm taking the red eye. It was cheaper. Hopefully, I'll be able to sleep on the plane. I wish I could go with you. New York City is a magical place. You'll have so much fun. I hope so. I'm going to visit my brother who lives there. I'll stay for a week and then take the train down to Washington D.C. That sounds like a great vacation. I'm looking forward to a week at the beach for my summer vacation. I just want to relax. Language notes. Ticket can refer to many different types of transportation: metro, bus, train, plane, etc. In general, you can guess the means of transportation by the context. I just bought a ticket to New York City. When discussing airplane travel, a red eye is a flight that leaves at night to arrive early the next morning. This is in reference to how red your eyes become when you don't get a full night's sleep. Next week, I'm taking the red eye. It was cheaper. I just bought a ticket to New York City. I'm so excited to see the city. Good for you! Traveling is so much fun. I love discovering new places and new people. When are you leaving? Next week, I'm taking the red eye. It was cheaper. Hopefully, I'll be able to sleep on the plane. I wish I could go with you. New York City is a magical place. You'll have so much fun. I hope so. I'm going to visit my brother who lives there. I'll stay for a week and then take the train down to Washington D.C. That sounds like a great vacation. I'm looking forward to a week at the beach for my summer vacation. I just want to relax. Pastimes and activities at the pet store. Oh, what a beautiful cat! What do you think? I think I'd rather get a dog. Dogs are more loyal than cats. Yes, but they're so much work. Would you be willing to walk it every single day and clean up after it? Hmm. Good point. What about a bird or a fish? We'd have to invest a lot of money in a cage or a fish tank, and I really don't know how to take care of a bird or a fish. Well, we're obviously not ready to get a pet yet. Yeah, you're right. Let's go grab some coffee and talk about it. Language notes. Oh, what a beautiful cat! Oh is used to show surprise or excitement. What a is an expression that means I think this is a very. What a what an is followed by an adjective, which is usually emphasized. Notice the emphasis on beautiful here. Oh, what a beautiful cat! Oh, what a beautiful cat! Dogs are more loyal than cats. Two things are being compared here: dogs and cats. Notice the structure of the sentences: noun, nouns, plus, is, are more, plus adjective, plus than, plus noun, nouns. The nouns and the adjective are content words here, so they are all emphasized. Dogs are more loyal than cats. Dogs are more loyal than cats. Every single day, notice that each word here is stressed. The speaker wants to make a point, so she emphasizes each word equally. Every single day is a lot. Would you be willing to walk it every single day? Would you be willing to walk it every single day? Good point here means 
I agree with you. Hmm. Good point. Hmm. Good point. Take care of. This phrase is used with animals, people, and things. It can mean watch a child while her parents are away, feed and house someone or something, or make sure things work properly. I always take care of my baby brother. I take care of my bird by feeding it and cleaning its cage. I need to take care of the broken sink. And I really don't know how to take care of a bird or a fish. And I really don't know how to take care of a bird or a fish. Yeah, you're right. Notice the pronunciation of this expression. The words all blend together here. This casual expression is used to agree with someone that you know well. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Oh, what a beautiful cat! What do you think? I think I'd rather get a dog. Dogs are more loyal than cats. Yes, but there's so much work. Would you be willing to walk it every single day and clean up after it? Hmm. Good point. What about a bird or a fish? We'd have to invest a lot of money in a cage or a fish tank, and I really don't know how to take care of a bird or a fish. Well, we're obviously not ready to get a pet yet. Yeah, you're right. Let's go grab some coffee and talk about it. Pastimes and activities. Giving your opinion. Where should we take a vacation this year? Let's decide soon. Well, I'd like to go somewhere warm. How about the beach? Or we could rent a cabin on the lake. You want to go to the beach again? <laughs> I want to ski this winter. How about a compromise? What about traveling to the Alps in Europe next April? We can find a ski resort on a lake. Oh, we've never been to Europe before, but I don't know if it will be sunny and warm then. I need to do some research first. That will help me make up my mind. Language notes: Decide is a useful verb to express choice. The idiom "to make up my mind" also means. To decide, there are so many choices in this menu. It's going to take a while to make up my mind. Decide. You can finish the sentence with either the idiom or the verb decide. Let's decide soon. That will help me make up my mind. Let's decide soon. That will help me make up my mind. How about this phrase presents an alternative? This phrase can be followed by a subject plus a conjugated verb, or by a noun. How about we go swimming? How about a movie tonight? How about the beach? How about the beach? Many verbs express opinions: to think, to believe, to suppose, to assume, etc. They are not all synonymous. For example, to suppose and to assume express that the speaker has a preconceived idea. He came back late from work, so I assumed that traffic was bad. I suppose that may not have been the case, and that he might just have had a lot of work. Where should we take a vacation this year? Let's decide soon. Well, I'd like to go somewhere warm. How about the beach? Or we could rent a cabin on the lake. You want to go to the beach again? <laughs> I want to ski this winter. How about a compromise? What about traveling to the Alps in Europe next April? We can find a ski resort on a lake. Oh, we've never been to Europe before, but I don't know if it will be sunny and warm then. I need to do some research first. That will help me make up my mind. Pastimes and activities. Hobbies. 
I'm so happy this week of midterm exams is finished. Same here. I'm looking forward to relaxing in the mountains this weekend. I've planned a little hike in the woods, and I'm going to take a canoe trip down the river if the weather cooperates. Oh, fun! I'm going to Michigan. I'm taking my camera because fall is coming fast. The leaves are already turning all shades of red and orange. It will be awesome. Next time you go there, I'll join you. I've heard Michigan is a great place to go canoeing. Language notes. Midterm. Students at universities in the United States often take exams mid-semester, around October or March of every year. These exams are called midterms. Exams at the end of the semester are called finals or final exams, and are usually in May. I'm so happy this week of midterm exams is finished. I'm so happy this week of midterm exams is finished. Gonna is a colloquial form of "I'm going to." Other similar constructions include "wanna," "want to." Or have to, have to. These are examples of transcriptions of spoken English and should not be used in a formal context. Some of these examples are now seen in text messages as a means of shortening sentences. And I'm going to take a canoe trip down the river if the weather cooperates. And I'm going to take a canoe trip down the river if the weather cooperates. Awesome. Is a colloquial way of saying excellent, cool, great. Last night's rock concert was awesome. It will be awesome. It will be awesome. I'm so happy this week of midterm exams is finished. Same here. I'm looking forward to relaxing in the mountains this weekend. I've planned a little hike in the woods, and I'm going to take a canoe trip down the river if the weather cooperates. Oh, fun! I'm going to Michigan. I'm taking my camera because fall is coming fast. The leaves are already turning all shades of red and orange. It will be awesome. Next time you go there, I'll join you. I've heard Michigan is a great place to go canoeing. Pastimes and activities. Weddings. Doesn't the bride look beautiful in that wedding dress? Yes, she looks amazing, and the groom is so romantic. I just heard the story of how they got engaged. He proposed to her during a candlelight dinner in London. Did you know that was where they went to school? Oh, wonderful! And the honeymoon. What a great idea! Most people just go to the beach for a week after they tie the knot, but they plan on heading to California and cruising the coast on their motorcycle. Really, what a fantastic idea! This is by far the best wedding I've ever been to. Language notes. Doesn't. When you have a negative question, the expected answer is yes. As such. It expresses the exact opposite of what is being conveyed, i.e., the bride does look absolutely beautiful. Doesn't the bride look beautiful in that wedding dress? Doesn't the bride look beautiful in that wedding dress? Listen to the stress on honeymoon. There are three syllables in honeymoon, with the stress on the first syllable, honeymoon. This content word is culturally important, so it's emphasized. It means a trip or vacation taken by a newly married couple. Oh, wonderful! And the honeymoon. Oh, wonderful! And the honeymoon. Tie the knot is an informal way of saying get married. Most people just go to the beach for a week after they tie the knot. Most people just go to the beach for a week after they tie the knot. Can you find and explain the two usages of just in this dialogue? Just is an adverb that can be used in two different ways. A. 
to indicate a very recent past. I just heard the story. When used to convey time, just is commonly used with a simple past verb because the action is complete. Sometimes it can also be used with the present perfect. He's just finished writing a book. B, to indicate contrast or emphasis. Most people just go to the beach. In that case, just can be replaced by simply and emphasize the word it relates to, a verb, adjective, or other adverb, by denoting contrast. Compare the following sentences: They just got married yesterday. Adverb of time. The wedding reception was just wonderful. Adverb of emphasis. Doesn't the bride look beautiful in that wedding dress? Yes, she looks amazing, and the groom is so romantic. I just heard the story of how they got engaged. He proposed to her during a candlelight dinner in London. Did you know that was where they went to school? Oh, wonderful! And the honeymoon. What a great idea! Most people just go to the beach for a week after they tie the knot, but they plan on heading to California and cruising the coast on their motorcycle. Really? What a fantastic idea! This is by far the best wedding I've ever been to. Pastimes and activities. Giving advice. Thanks for meeting with me during your lunch hour. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm happy to help. What's going on? Oh, you know the usual. Should I take this new job or do I stick with my current one? Well, I think it's time for a change. Don't you? They pay you late, and you are unhappy. Do you really think so? I know so, and I've been listening to you complain for over a year now. Trust me, take the job. What do you have to lose? Language notes. In formal conversation, giving advice is often suggested through modals. Ought to, should, could. If I were you, in informal conversations, people tend to use words such as "I think that," "I feel that," "In my opinion." Well, I think it's time for a change, don't you? Well, I think it's time for a change, don't you? Listen for the emphasis on "I know so," and "Trust me." These common phrases can be used to convey both positive and negative emotions. I know so conveys a deep belief or certainty. To know shows more certainty than to think. I know so. I know so. Trust me. Trust me. Notice the use of command forms. Take the job. Trust me. Go for it. The command form can be used to gently persuade someone. Thanks for meeting with me during your lunch hour. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm happy to help. What's going on? Oh, you know the usual. Should I take this new job or do I stick with my current one? Well, I think it's time for a change, don't you? They pay you late, and you are unhappy. Do you really think so? I know so, and I've been listening to you complain for over a year now. Trust me, take the job. What do you have to lose?